This is John Buck, Super Chemist. Now we've already made the uh, ethyl magnesium bromide. Uh, now I don't know what the what the yield was because if I titrate it to see what you know what the yield was, then I lost. I lose my you know. It's not like it's a big reaction. I did a small reaction. Uh, so I'm not going to test it, but I will use carbon dioxide as the electrophile and continue this reaction on to do the Grignard uh, reaction. This is just a Grignard reagent, what we made, okay? Uh, first thing I want to go over is do it at your own risk if you copy anything in the video. Number two, big, big, giant mistake, the biggest mistake, <coughs> is I should have added some uh, diethyl ether to the pot. The reason I didn't was one I forgot. I actually did plan on putting in like 10 or 20 milliliters in there, um, which still wasn't enough. I should at least put 100, I mean 50 to 100 milliliters, at least covered up the metal. Uh, that helps as a heat sink. You know what I mean? That absorbs some of the heat. When, if, when I'm dripping that stuff down, it's, uh, you know, there's nothing to absorb the heat, so a little bit of of diethyl ether that's there just boils away, man. Uh, another thing, I would have used a gram condenser. That would have definitely helped hold in the uh, ether and also use a longer condenser. I would use three times longer condenser than what I used. Um, I would have went slower at, for, at first uh, my plan, remember I had a plan to drip it in, the first 10% of the ethyl bromide diethyl ether mixture, right, onto the metal. I was only going to put 10% in, and then if it was reacting, heating up, I was going to keep dripping it in. If not, I was going to stop the dripping until it did, until I got it to start boiling. If you noticed in the video, I did not do that. I dripped it in for a couple seconds, and then I dumped in a bunch, dripped it a little bit, and dumped in a little bit more, and that was not smart. I should have just kept dripping it in. I should have stuck to the plan. Drip it in until 10% 10 of the stuff is in there, and then, like I said, wait and see what happens. Uh, keep, the, keep the pot boiling the whole time. A couple times I let it stop boiling, and uh, the reason why that's bad is because, uh, I mean, if you have, a, if you're using argon or nitrogen or you're going to use an inert uh, atmosphere, then this doesn't matter really. But if you're not doing that, like in the video, I didn't use any inert atmosphere. I just used regular atmosphere. Uh, oh, if you, if you don't keep it boiling, you can figure oxygen... And water from the air. And even if you keep the water out, you know most of it by having the uh, drying tube, you still have oxygen. Drying tube ain't gonna scrub any oxygen out. Uh, oxygen will ruin your reaction too. If you have it boiling the entire time, that means you have vapors above, diethyl ether vapors above. That's pushing the oxygen away. You know what I mean? It's like a blanket. And when you stop it from boiling, you remove that blanket and let the oxygen come into the reaction, okay? So I did that a few times. I'd let it stop boiling. I, I wasn't perfect. I see now, though, how to control the everything, you know, better. Because um, it did take about two hours or an hour and a half or something like that to drip that stuff in. So I, by all that time, I did get the hang of... Uh, you know how to control it a little bit. Uh, you need ligands. If you don't have ligands, the reaction will not work. And by ligands, I mean uh, the part of the coordination complex that donates the t two uh, lone pair electrons. Uh, they donate the two lone pair electrons to form a data bond in a coordination complex. The ligand would be the one that's donating. I forget what they call the one that receives. But 
without that ligand, it will not work. That means you need uh, diethyl ether, uh, uh, one four dioxane, maybe THF, tetrahydrofuran, um, something like that to that effect. Um, number eight. At the end of the reflux, oh, at the end, well, before you reflux, at the end, I would shake it. And when I say shake it, I mean, I shake the whole apparatus, man. I shook that thing up. And, uh, boy, it took off. It really took off. Twice I shook it where it took off. Uh, so, so something wasn't reacting or whatever, and I had to push it into place or whatever, you know what I mean? So I suggest when you get done, you shake it, and then let it keep going until it stops boiling. And when it stops boiling and the temperature starts dropping one or two degrees, get a, a warm water bath, put it on there, and reflux it for 15 to 30 minutes. I reflux for 30 minutes. Make sure that it's all reacting. You know what I mean? You shake it to make sure all the metals got reacted, and then you reflux it just in general to make sure that everything has reacted. Um, <coughs> I think I lost at least 10% of the product due to the fact uh, from uh, run, you know, I had a runaway, controlled runaway re reaction about three times during this during this uh, experiment, okay? Three times I had a, a runaway controlled, but still a runaway where all the or at least, you know, 50% of it was at the very, very top of the uh, condenser trying to leave the apparatus. And 25% would be in the pot still, and 25% would be in between the pot and the condenser, you know, in vapor form. That's a lot of vapor to be trying to get out of your, out of your apparatus. Three times that happened to me. So if this was like a giant, you know, or even four or five times bigger than... Uh, what what I did definitely would have bumped with my terrible skills with this reaction because it was the first time I did it. I would have definitely bumped all the ether out of there and had a big vapor cloud of ether in this room. Uh, that's why you know you don't put any uh, no uh, pilot lights, no flames. I don't have none of that around this reaction. That's for sure. Especially uh, with this, because your condenser is going to be up high, right? All the gas is going to be squirted out up on top, but diethyl ether is light, so it wants to go down. So you are basically, it's going to shoot up, make a blanket up on top of the ceiling, and that blanket is just going to slowly go down until it hits, hits some kind of uh, ignition source, like a pilot light. But it'll be just like a big blanket coming down, like a big cloud. Anyways, uh, I guess that's all for this reaction. Like I said, I'm trying to make propanoic acid. So I will react this in a Grignard reaction coming up here uh, with CO2 being the, the uh, electrophile. You all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.